Welcome to Introduction to Science and Health Communication, Part 3. We only have one topic left to cover in Part 3. How do you do it? In Part 3, we're going to take a look at some of the best practices for effectively communicating science and health. How do you do it? How do you make it accurate and engaging? How do you interpret science without sacrificing accuracy or misrepresenting the information? Making something accurate and engaging can be very challenging, particularly with science and health topics which tend to be complex and unfamiliar to the general public. Accurate. When something is accurate, it is credible and verifiable. For an opinion to be taken seriously, it needs the support of logic, reasoning, and appropriate sources. If you are a scientist or a health professional, it's important to you and the communities you serve that your opinions and communication be taken seriously. Let's look for a minute at opinions. Opinions can be very tricky things, and it's one of the biggest traps in producing effective communication. Here's an example of a good opinion. When Stephen Hawking has an opinion about how man should go about exploring space, people listen. He has credibility in his field, and his opinions are taken seriously. A good opinion is also one that is backed up by sound reasoning and references to credible sources. The unintentional opinion. This is a direct quote from a student paper. It was not a bad paper, and they were a very good student, but they unintentionally presented opinion as fact. This is one of the most difficult things to avoid when producing science and health communications, but it's very important to avoid unintentional opinions in order to sound credible. To keep opinions out of your communications, avoid saying how people feel or telling them what they feel or think. Just present the information and let the audience decide for themselves. Avoiding credibility traps, including the unintentional opinion trap, can be very challenging. Here's a few things to keep in mind when you're producing communication for the public. Avoid absolute statements. Things like always, constantly, never, everybody, nobody. Unless you're writing an editorial or an opinion piece, keep yourself out of the communication. Avoid giving advice, present information, and let your audience decide for themselves. Avoid adjectives. These are one of the biggest traps. Just because you think it's beautiful, terrible, outrageous, or ridiculous, doesn't mean that someone else will think it is. Again, just present the information and let your audience decide what to do with it. So, to recap on the credibility traps. Never use never. Always avoid always. Exciting adjectives can wreak terrible havoc on your fabulous credibility. And show. Don't tell. Accurate equals credible and verifiable. Show, don't tell. That's very important. So what do I mean by show, don't tell? Here's an example. Skin cancer is very serious and everyone should wear sunscreen, otherwise they are at risk of possible death. That's one way to say it. Here's another way. According to cancer.org, skin cancer is the most common of all cancers. It accounts for nearly half of all cancers in the United States. You can take safety precautions to protect yourself against skin cancer. Use sunscreen and lip balm with sun protection factor of 15 or higher. And wear a hat and sunglasses when you're out in the sun. In the second example, the information is simply being presented. The facts are being presented. You're showing the audience this is 
what it is according to a credible source. The first example is just an opinion. Skin cancer is serious and everyone should wear sunscreen. Engaging. How do you engage with your audience? Connecting and making it relevant. Find a way to make the information relevant to your audience. If it's a story about breast cancer, you might ask, do you have a mother, sister, wife, or daughter? A recent study showed that. And go into this, the information. A great way to connect is to tell a story or use an anecdote. Accessible. In order for things to be engaging, they also have to be accessible. And what do I mean by accessible here? I, I don't mean physically accessible. I mean mentally accessible. Effective and engaging science and health communication is accessible to your audience, meaning they can understand it. Avoid science jargon and complicated concepts. If a science term or concept is crucial to the communication, then introduce it and explain what it means. Be sensitive to cultural issues, words, phrases, use simple language, and remember the average literacy level in the United States is 8th grade. Audience. Who is your audience? How and what you communicate will vary depending on your audience. Get to know your audience before you sit down to produce your communication piece. Is it the public? Is it peers, college students, policymakers at the local, local or state level? Knowing your audience is an important first step in producing effective and engaging science and health communications. We're going to take a look at some best practices for effective communication here. These are examples pulled from, these are actually findings pulled from a report where they identified successful communication programs for communicating science and technology to the public. Some of the things that they looked at were audience size, number of web hits, the length of time that people spent on a website. Several practices contributed to the most effective communication. This report shows how prominent connection, relevancy, and accessibility are in effective science and health communication. So the purple, these are things that are looking at accessibility, using multimedia, illustrations, interactivity to bring science to life, providing information to the commercial media in an easily usable form. The boxes in green have to do with connection and relevancy, illustrating both the process and the product of science. Viewing the topic from the audience's point of view and not the institution. Why should the audience care? Why is it important to the audience? This is a very important point of view to keep in mind when you're producing communication for a public audience or any audience. Relating science to the everyday environment. This helps people make a connection to the information. Why is it important to them? How is it relevant to them? Accessibility, connection, and relevancy. All important elements in producing effective science and health communication. So what's a tactic for doing some of these things? Storytelling. Storytelling is a great tool for all types of communication. Storytelling is a tool that anybody can use to help them effectively communicate science or health information. Stories have the power to change minds and shape beliefs. The narrative is a very strong tool for persuasion. And by the very nature of storytelling, it supports those elements of connection and relevancy. It can also help make complex or unfamiliar information more accessible. Think about the concept of space travel and the speed of light. Most people's ideas about these two concepts come from stories, not first-hand experience or education. 
That's just an example of how powerful storytelling can be. As we wrap up part three, you've had a good overview of the challenges in communicating science and health, how to avoid some common traps, and how to approach producing a communications piece. Communication can take many forms, especially with the resources offered through the internet. Again, which form you choose may depend on who your audience is and how best you can reach them. Regardless of the form that you choose, the approach is the same. Balancing accuracy and engagement to produce effective communication. In part three, we looked at how you can practice effective science and health communication. In part four, the last video in the series, we'll take a look at a short case study to examine the delicate balance between accuracy and engagement.